I think for a good chunk of your lab activity, I would uh, want you to use the FET simulation, which you know it's not as good an oscilloscope, but it's a better circuit builder. So, um, so you need to download it. And, you know, under software requirements, it has the same link to the Java download. So um, you know, <laughs> go go there. Uh, as long as you are using a computer, Windows, Mac, or Linux, you should be able to run Java. And I downloaded this earlier. Let me run it from here. And uh, that actually has two simulations that sound very similar. There's this one, and there's one that's called this uh, virtual lab. I liked this better. Uh, the one that's labeled the virtual lab, it's missing some features. So, um, so I think I'll just have you use this. And this has an um, exact same problem which is that uh, it looks too small. And even though this window itself is uh, resizable, I can you know, resize it. But um, what it doesn't let me do is for the chart that you use to display voltage and current, it doesn't let me change that. Uh, there's no way to change the size of this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to just make this window smaller so that relative to this window, um, this plot should be relative, uh, should be larger. I lost the handle on the thing. So I, I think uh, when I share just this uh, application window, now this uh, plot will appear at a reasonable size. So I'm again relying on my real time audience to tell me if that doesn't happen, let me change my share the screen. Um, so I hope as you look at the shared screen, it fills up your screen and that this plot is, you know, reasonably readable. You can read the numbers, you can read the letters. So I hope that's happening. And on my screen, it's uh, rather tiny, but I'll just squint my eyes a little bit. So, uh, so this is a bit more usable. It's <laughs> more user friendly than the oscilloscope, which is good for uh, playing with. You know, it's not as frustrating as the oscilloscope can be. Um, but for those of you who might go on to use the oscilloscopes for things, it's um, um, it's uh, um, it's not giving you the real experience because no, <laughs> real world the circuit building is not exactly the same as this. So um, I guess I haven't quite thought through what I want to do with this. Um, I can build one of the RC circuits. There are some questions in chapter 10 that we skipped over. But oh, I think some question that we didn't skip over are questions that relate to the transient behavior of the circuit and, um, and the asymptotic behavior, which you kind of saw in the, with the other simulation. But let me try to build a more explicit analog of homework questions that you have seen here. So I think some of the homework questions you have seen um, had, had this. I think you had a register and capacitor in parallel. So let me build that. Uh, there's register. Uh, your homework question might have had a bit more complex circuit, but let me stick with the simpler one for now. Uh, so, well, uh, this circuit is kind of what you already know. Uh, let me just uh, do this here. I'm going to measure voltage across the register. Then uh, when I close the circuit, it does that. Uh, that must be the voltage of the power supply. Is it about eight volts? Let me see here. Oh, I think there's a show value function. Yeah, okay, or oh, nine volt. So uh, again, I'm hoping, so these letters are super tiny to me, but I'm hoping it's readable to people uh, with this uh, shared window being resized to fill your screen. So uh, yeah, so that was uh, showing nine volt. And you know, when I close the switch, it does that. When I open the switch, it goes to zero volt and uh, um, Oh, I guess you can use this like a Morse code. Anyways, <laughs> so that's not all that surprising. Uh, let me, I'm going to reset dynamics to, wait, can I reset dynamics? It doesn't reset the time. 
So I'm going to build one of the circuits that I think you might have seen in chapter 10, which is register and a capacitor in parallel. And once you have that, then it begins to look more interesting. And I can demonstrate some of the things that, uh, that we talked about when we went through chapter 10. And you might have you know, seen the math and believed in the math. And um, you know, the way science works, you don't just believe the math, you do the experiment. And, <laughs> and when the math you calculate agrees with the experiment, that's when you, we begin to believe in the result there. And um, so we don't have the real experiment, but I'm asking you to believe me when I say that this simulation gives you a result that's a very similar to what you would have gotten um, in the real lab. So, so, okay, I'm gonna start running the simulation. So is there, there's no way to slow down the simulation, right? So I'm gonna try to pause the simulation as quickly as I can right after I close the switch. I think I have about three seconds to do that. So that should be enough time. So, okay, I'm gonna close the switch and start the simulation. Uh, that didn't do what I expected. What happened? Um, this uh, almost immediately went to nine volt. I'm pretty sure it's not, okay, okay. Some connection is broken here because I see nothing flowing through the capacitor. Um, what did I do wrong? Let me uh, fix whatever it is I did wrong. Was it something not connected? Uh, I'm just troubleshooting. Let me just uh, try this. Okay, um, that worked. <laughs> okay, so right now I'm telling you that something in the simulation didn't work. Let me see if that can be fixed. And as soon as that's fixed, we'll okay, let me do reset dynamics and run it again. Um, that's not quite right. Uh, let me see if I got this. Um, well, let me try this. I'm gonna try opening the switch. And if I open up the switch, Okay, something flows. Oh, oh, I, I know <laughs> much wrong. Um, what's wrong here is uh, so I'm was I am and I was and I am expecting to see a transient behavior, and what's wrong here is that this transient is happening way too quickly. I needed something to limit how quickly the transient occurs. And one way to do that is to introduce a register. So let me do that here. I'm gonna introduce a small register here, uh, not too big. Uh, so I, 10 ohm register is what I have there. So let me put in a, I don't know. I, let me see what the smallest value the simulation will let me have is. Um, well, of course you don't, let me have zero. Can I go? I guess I need to just enter 0 0.5. I think that's what I want to do. Yeah, so 20 times as little. So there's some significant resistance there um, or measurable resistance there, but that's much less than that. Okay. So <laughs> with that, it should look more realistic. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna reset dynamics uh, that discharges the capacitor, makes it so that everything's starting from scratch open the switch here, and I'm gonna close the switch and then stop the simulation as quickly as I can. Oh, <laughs> it burned briefly. Okay, let me do it this way. Uh, okay, so, all right, let the simulation run for a bit. I'm gonna pause, close the switch, and go frame by frame. As I go frame by frame, there's a brief moment when the, um, the, the switch is burning, meaning a lot of current is flowing. And this is the moment where the capacitor is acting like a short. So during this time, the voltage across this register is zero or as zero as it can be. 
all the voltage drop of nine volt is happening here. So it's uh, letting through current of 18 ampere, which is fairly large current. That's why the switch is burning. As the current flows through the capacitor, it charges up the capacitor. So once the capacitor is charged up to a degree, then, then um, current, so the, the, so then not as much current flows through the whole circuit, which is why the switch is not burning anymore. <laughs> and eventually this will charge up to the full value. I guess it's not um, as slow as I would uh, like it to be. So I think uh, I want larger capacitance. It's uh, 0 0.1 farad is already kind of large. Let me see what happens with the 0 0.2. Um, reset dynamics. Open switch. Okay. Um, close the switch. And I'm, for the transient one, I'm going to do frame by frame. So it burns for a bit. It burn, This time it burned for two frames instead of um, one. And you can see that it charges up to the full value. It takes longer to charge up to the full value. It's because with a larger capacitance, uh, 0 0.2 farad. Why did it disappear? Show value. 0 0.2 farad. Uh, it takes double the, uh, it can store the double the amount of current or current charge at the same voltage. So it takes double the amount of time to charge up. And really, if I don't want this uh, um, switch to burn, what I need to do is I need to increase, I need a more more of the current limiting register. So I can make this resistance at one ohm, then I, then I don't think it'll burn. Let's see if it, I mean, you know, it's not literally burning, but you know, the fire animation won't show up. So let's see here. I don't know why show value keeps disappearing. Okay, so I'm gonna close the switch and then advance the frame by frame. So, Okay, it never burns. <laughs> and because this is now limiting the current, it's limiting the maximum current to, to nine ampere instead of 18 ampere that was before. So this rise in a voltage here, which is the same as the voltage here across the capacitor, which indicates the amount of charge on the capacitor, it's gonna take twice as long. So when this comes up, you will be able to compare it to the slope there, how much longer it took. So, so that's the transient behavior. So the moment I close the switch, the voltage drop here is at zero because that's where capacitor is starting out at. And it takes time for the capacitor to charge you up and have non-zero voltage across it, have charge stored on it. And over some amount of time, it charges up to this value. That's the asymptotic behavior. Over a long enough of time, the capacitor, no more current flows through the capacitor, meaning um, this portion of the circuit can be basically ignored. And the only current is flowing through this register here that gives you the voltage drop. And so here it should be, I guess uh, the voltage here should be not quite nine volts. Uh, it should be nine divided by 11 times 10. So, you know, like 10% less than nine volts. I don't know, 8.1 or something close to that. So that's what you should get. Um, I, with this simulation, I can also do a couple more things. I can show the current to confirm some of these uh, pictures that I was, well, describing. I, I think one useful thing to show would be the um, current through the register. By the way, uh, I don't like this display. This, um, you have to imagine this current emitter as a kind of a non-contact current emitter, which maybe by measuring the magnetic field or whatever, it can simply measure the current at a point. Um, you don't have to break the circuit or it is a bit unrealistic, but I hope you can visualize that this is a non-contact current emitter of a sort that can simply measure a current that <laughs> passes through a point without modifying the circuit. So. So let me reset dynamics and um, let me open the switch. Oops, open the switch. Let the simulations run for a little bit. And then I'm going to close the switch, look at the transient behavior for a bit, and then look at the asymptotic behavior. So close the switch and first few frames. 
So you see that there's a huge spike in the current through the capacitor that uh, uh, at the very initial beginning where the, uh, where the voltage drop across the capacitor is zero and it's basically acting like a short. So, so all of the current is going through the capacitor, nothing through the resistor. I don't know how it decides if the current is positive or negative. Does it have a sense of direction? I don't know. Uh, with the voltage it had, you know, but with the current, I don't know how it does it. Uh, anyways, um, not worrying about the sign thing. Now, over time, the as the charges store get stored on the capacitor, there's a voltage drop across capacitor. That's the same voltage drop across the resistor. So that means that there begins to be current through this resistor. That's what you're beginning to see here. And as there's a current through this resistor, the voltage drop here, in, yeah, same voltage drop I was describing, as this voltage drop increases, the voltage drop across this resistor decreases, meaning less current to flow through the whole circuit. That's why the current through the capacitor is decreasing. And you know all of this is a fascinating circuit analysis that you will do next week, which we skipped when we were covering chapter 10. So uh, it's gonna reach the steady uh, asymptotic stage where no current is flowing through the capacitor and all the current is flowing through the register which matches with this voltage drop. And when I open this switch, uh, well, let's see what happens when I open the switch. So I'm going to open the switch and go by frame by frame again. Open the switch and go by frame by frame. So the effect of a circuit here is uh, now basically this loop of the register and the capacitor. Um, this register plays no role because it's part of a branch that's open circuit. So, um, so you have a point to farad the capacitor that was charged up to something like 8.1 volt discharging into this resistor. And that's what you are seeing here. You are seeing the, well, I guess uh, as this discharges, it's uh, less and less current, less and less voltage than what it used to be. So the current through this resistor is decreasing, but the current out of the capacitor is increasing. The moment the switch opened, it shut up to a value as it begins to discharge. And as it continues to discharge, it'll, um, the amount of current will be less and less until it discharges all the way down to zero and no current flows th through this register and everything's done. So, so that's one circuit you can build. And, um, um, and uh, so this week we are covering inductors and that's uh, one of the circuit elements that uh, one of the circuit elements you can um, use in an arrangement like this. In fact, let me do that uh, just to show you what inductor does. So let me replace this capacitor with an inductor. And the transient behavior of inductor will be different from capacitor in an interesting way. And I guess I'll just do the same thing. I'm gonna reset dynamics let this run for a little bit. And so I haven't actually tried this before. Um, so we'll see how this works. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna close the switch and look at the transient behavior for the first few frames. Uh, one, two, three, okay. And what you see now is it's rather different from what you saw with the capacitor earlier because Oh, that's gonna take a long time. Um, let me change some of the parameter values so that it doesn't take such a long time. Um, I think I want smaller inductance. Let me try 10. And I want it to show value. Reset dynamics, open the switch. Okay, close the switch and look at first a few frames. Uh, maybe that's uh, reasonable-ish. 
Mm. I don't know. It takes such a long time. Let me change this resistance here. That'll, um, yeah, the, I think a larger resistance here will help. So let me do that. Uh, I'm going to change this up to 5 ohm. That'll, uh, I just want the entire change to show in one plot. Uh, so, okay, reset dynamics, open the switch, let the simulation run for a bit, and then I'm going to close the switch, show a few cycle. Okay. Um, so the kind of transient behavior you see here, it's uh, very different from with the capacitor. So this is when I close the switch, you see that the voltage drop across the register here changes almost immediately. And, um, and the current begins to flow through this register immediately. And it has to do with the property of the inductor and which as you are learning this week, it um, basic uh, word description of inductor is that it resists change in current through, through itself. So before I close the switch, there was a zero current flowing through it. So inductor register, uh, it prevents sudden changes from happening in current through it. That's why when I close the switch, current was at zero and it kind of remains at zero. It over time, it changed, it asymptotically reaches its final value, which uh, should be determined. So, the final value should reach is something like a two, two ampere. It's gonna reach that asymptotically, but it happens gradually. And um, it, it's a very different kind of property than capacitor has. So then you swap out capacitor for inductor, it results in this a different type of behavior. And here the steady state circuit is actually where inductor behaves like a short circuit. So all the current that can flow it flows through the inductor and not this register. It, um, it does to, yeah, the register now there's zero current flowing through here. So this uh, steady state is the state where the inductor is charged. It stores some kind of amount of energy. I think that's what we are covering this week. And um, yeah, and uh, let me now introduce another uh, shift by opening this circuit when I do and you see the current. And so here I've basically changed the circuit from what we had before to this loop of just the inductor and the register. And, um, and what you see is that the current that used to flow through here, now it flows through this register and current flowing through this register, it causes a voltage change and that same voltage change is imposed on the inductor, which causes the uh, the rate of change of current on the inductor. So the amount of current on the through the inductor starts to change. So in a very weird sense, inductor is discharging through the capacitor, but it's not discharging like a charge is stored on a capacitor discharging. It's a discharging maybe more in the sense of the amount of energy, because um, well. Yeah, that's what's a discharging. Um, you can, yeah, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> uh, let me do one more thing. I'm kind of interested in seeing how the simulation copes with it. Let me try this and we'll end this session with that, or at least the recorded portion of the session with that, which is, so, okay, I charged up the inductor. And what I'm gonna do this time is, um, I'm gonna get rid of this register altogether. No more register. So it's a kind of an open circuit. And I don't know what the circuit will do if I open this switch suddenly, because um, this is kind of a paradoxical situation. The inductor enforces that no sudden change occurs through the inductor. No sudden change in the current through the inductor occurs. And the fact that this is open circuit means that current here now should be zero and it's not. And the inductor should prevent it from suddenly reaching zero. Uh, well, let's see what happens. 
<laughs> yeah, it does that. Um, so uh, current here is it's zero, I guess, because um, yeah, you do have this open circuit, current can flow. I have no idea what this is doing. Um, <laughs> I, I guess uh, I can't really look inside the simulation what it's showing. Um, I don't know what this means. Maybe undefined voltage. So in real world, not simulation, all these things resolve somehow. And the way to resolve them in real world is that the current to the inductor being suddenly cut uh, induces a large voltage. In fact, um, it, it can be so large that it jumps across the terminals of a switch. It produces arcing. That's actually one of the ways that uh, motors can get damaged. Um, or can wear out, uh, contacts can wear out. So, um, so yeah, it, but <laughs> you know, in the simulation, they do this, which I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, I'll just reset dynamics. Um, I, I don't even know what that's supposed to be plotting. Maybe it's a uh, oscillation, I don't know. So anyways, uh, this is a general circuit building tool. You can also use this to build AC circuit using AC voltage source. Uh, as I write up the lab instruction, I'll see uh, how much of AC circuit uh, portion that we can include. But uh, so this simulation basically lets you build anything we are talking about in the lecture. So, um, so, so we'll be using this uh, to do uh, your lab activity um, to cover the, the things that are, that were not covered by the oscillate, oh wait, you can see this, <laughs> by the oscillation, let me change my shirt. So, so we'll be, um, I think between these two simulations, they will cover fairly well um, what you need, what we need to cover for time dependent circuits and AC circuits. So, um, so I hope uh, the use of the simulation demonstrate today is useful. I think this one is probably, um, you will feel comfortable enough, um, especially having done the DC circuits lab. I think it's this simulation where, uh, I, I do like that it's uh, kind of simulating what your experience with the real oscilloscope would be like, but that also means that it's got a lot of frustrating things. So I hope uh, seeing me work through that uh, will help you when you work with this, uh, when you do your lab.